Yeah, so we can see that uh, during 2020, we've actually managed, despite the challenges of COVID-19, to actually deliver a 7% growth in uh, comparable exchange rates. So we have found ways to maneuver the pandemic. And we are in a cycle now where we are launching a number of innovative medicines for people living with, uh, with diabetes. And we will continue those uh, commercial execution priorities uh, into 21. So we believe that we can continue the growth pattern we are on. Now, I'm, I'm really, uh, really glad that we have you on the program today. I've been following the COVID situation from a health perspective very closely throughout the pandemic. And there's a bit of research that's caught my attention. There's mounting concern around the link between COVID-19 and diabetes. Researchers don't yet understand how or why the virus might trigger diabetes in patients. But at least one analysis has shown that 14% uh, of those with severe COVID developed a form form of the disorder. Can you share with us what you understand about the link between COVID-19 and the development of diabetes? Yeah, so we, we, we know that when you live with diabetes, your cardiovascular system is, is under some stress. And uh, when you then on top of that get uh, a, an infection or a, a virus like COVID-19, that makes it harder for people living with a chronic disease like diabetes to actually cope with, with, the, with the virus. I do not think that uh, COVID-19 in itself is leading to people getting diabetes, but if you live with a chronic disease like diabetes or overweight, you uh, are at risk for having a more adverse disease uh, situation when you get uh, COVID-19. And are you inclined to do any further research to understand whether there is a link in the other direction? I certainly take your point that diabetes has been a, an illness that has made people more vulnerable to the disease. But this other relationship, the inverse between COVID actually leading to diabetes, is that an area that you think warrants more investigation? I think we have uh, looked into our data to uh, to see that really if you're in good control, if you're on some of our latest uh, med medicines, you actually have a better outcome in, in a situation with COVID-19. I do not think, of course, we'll look into it, but I do not think there is a reason to believe that uh, COVID-19 in itself leads to diabetes, but uh, it's really important to be in good control. And uh, that's, that's really the purpose of what we do, really to drive change to make sure that people get a better outcome when they have a, a disease like diabetes. Uh, looking back to last year, sir, uh, one of the major developments for your company is you launched an oral diabetes pill called Rebelsis. I just wonder if you're happy with the rollout of the pill and how the pipeline looks going forwards in terms of a more broader rollout. Yes, this is a really exciting opportunity for us. So for the first time, it's been possible to make a, a large molecule, a large GLP-1 molecule, formulate it into a tablet and bring it into, uh, into the bloodstream. Um, and this is a, a revolution, uh, honestly, in, in treating uh, diabetes. And uh, we have seen the first year that we saw a very strong uptake of sales, uh, selling 1.9 billion uh, Danish krona in the first year and taking market share in the all treatment category of diabetes, a market, uh, a segment that we are not active in today. So it's a big opportunity for Novo Nordisk. We have launched so far in, in nine markets. And uh, in, in this year, we're going to launch in Japan, which is a very, very significant opportunity for us as 80% of the Japanese diabetes market is actually treated by tablets, a segment we are not active in today. So we are very encouraged with the performance of the launch so far despite the lockdowns and, and less face-to-face -face activity with physicians. And we have a, a very important uh, rollout plan for launching in many more countries uh, in the coming uh, months.